G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today I've allowed in the workshop a Ford Territory. I know, right? I've really lowered my standards. The 2008 SY series, four litre engine. It has what seems to be a no start condition. Let's have a look at it. So the other day I went to the customer's place and checked out the vehicle and sure enough it didn't start. Click, 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 click. First thing I did was inspect the battery. Let's have a look at what it was like. So I took a photo of the test that I did. You can see that the state of health is 15%, but also notice the state of charge is 45% and it's down to, what's that, 12.2 um, volts, which is no good. It says replace, which is exactly what I did. After I'd replaced the battery, I continued to do further testing. I tested the starter motor and also the alternator. Both appeared to be in good condition. Then, something happened. So after testing the alternator, it came up with 14.5 volts under a loaded condition, no ripple, um, and so it seemed to be okay. But when I tested it a second time, phew, wasn't even working. I hooked up the scan tool to have a look at what was going on. There was fault codes up the wazoo. The instrument cluster states that it's only done 178,000 Ks, Psh, but I can guarantee you they were hard Ks. This territory is pretty rough. And in actual fact, I think the alternator is for schnookered, but don't be a parts changer, don't guess, don't load up the parts cannon, let's diagnose. Firstly, let's have a look at the scan tool now and see what fault codes are current. Even though there's still quite a few codes there, there's nowhere near as many as there were last time I looked. I cleared the codes last time, so these should be current ones. Let's firstly have a look at what's in the powertrain control module there. Firstly, we have a P1000, which states that a readiness test has not been complete. Not worried about that. Uh, CAN bus, uh, I'm not worried about that one either, because that can be a phantom one at times. I'll keep that in mind though. So in our body control module, we have a, uh, what's that? Heated backlight relay circuit open, uh, seat memory, seat memory, not worried about those for now. Although that might explain why perhaps the battery goes flat, but eh, keep that in mind. I won't uh, delete those at the moment. I won't uh, clear those codes. I'll leave them for now. Heating and air conditioning states we have that uh, communication error as well. We also have speed faults, which is interesting, and a air temperature internal uh, fault there. We'll just keep those in mind. I'm not concerned overly about any of those. I'd like to go into live data now into my PCM. This is the main one that I'm after, generator field current. As you can see it's at 5.99%. Let's start the vehicle. I might just uh, select that one for now and um, that way we can have a decent look at it. Let's have a look at what happens when I start it. Okay, it appears to be climbing, it appears to be working, then it drops out. Notice that? Let's turn on some lights, see how it responds to that. Lights are on, high beams on, got a tiny spike there, but we've got 0%. We're not doing any duty cycle whatsoever, are we? Um, I'd like to head under the bonnet now and just do a simple test with my ore tool, which might give us a little more information. So I've got my little ore tool hooked up, and as you can see, I'm checking the battery itself. State of health, remember, it's a brand new battery. I've literally just put it in um, oh, two days ago, I suppose. And the customer has not driven it since, apart from coming here. And yet, notice what state of charge is. It's only 46%. It certainly shouldn't be like that, and it wasn't like that when I installed it. See, it says it's good, it just needs to be recharged. Hmm. The clues are lining up. If we enter on that, we should be able to do a cranking test and then we can see if the starter is okay. Um, but of course, keep in mind that our battery charge is down a little bit, so it may take a little bit longer to crank. So as it says, we need to recharge the battery. That's the main problem. Uh, the cranking is low. It took uh, 665 milliseconds. Uh, should take a little bit less than that, but I'd say it's more the battery being low than the starter. I did check it the other day when I had the battery brand new in and it wasn't an issue. Let's have a look at the alternator. 
let's do a charging test. Loaded test means I need to load it with uh, headlights maybe on high beam, so we'll go onto that. Curiouser and curiouser. It's saying that it's charging. This, this is what I had the other day. It said that it was charging, that it was okay. But honestly, 13.96 isn't really much for a low battery. We should be getting it high in the air. So I need to do some further testing, guys. I'm not overly happy with the alternator, the way that it's charging or not charging. I seem to be getting some conflicting readings here. Now, when it's under load, of course, the headlights are on. We should get a spike. Now, I'll just turn on my headlights, and no doubt there'll be a spike, but notice it drops down straight away. There's no consistency in there. And uh, let's turn on the fan, shall we? Let's see what we do there. So our fans are coming up. That should spike as well. Now I've got no spike. The, uh, it's not being commanded on or not receiving a command, one of them. And headlights on, headlights off. But that fan should be enough to draw a huge load. But it's not. Let's just turn that fan off and see what that does. Hopefully you guys can see. Fans off, fans on. Air conditioner's off and on. I'm seeing no spikes there whatsoever, am I? Which is not very comforting. Whoops, got you out of screen there. Sorry about that, my bad. So we're clearly getting some varying readings there, aren't we? They're not consistent at all. Just a tiny little spike and then it drops right down to zero, which really isn't gonna charge the battery, is it? I believe this has an intermittent fault because as you can see now, state of health, 100%, state of charge, 98% saying it's a good battery and of course if we go through the whole process yet again start engine blah 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 saying that it's cranking normal we've now got 10 volts whereas we didn't have before let's go on to our alternator this time and i bet you it says it's okay okay so we're getting a discrepancy here aren't we it's now saying it's charging low uh, which is what I saw last time, in actual fact, it said no charge. The loaded and unloaded is now 13.6. Uh, it was a little bit higher before, uh, a little bit lower, I thought. But I want to get this thing hot because I think that's where the problem exists. In actual fact, what I did uh, last time was just hit the back of the alternator with a hammer. Gently, of course, Max, gently. I believe the brush pack has poor contact, something along those lines. I'd like to do some more testing to make sure that the PCM is uh, providing a duty cycle and also that the uh, PCM is receiving a signal from the alternator as well. I'll show you how that's done. One quick check you can do if your alternator is absolutely not working, which ours is in this case kind of sort of sometimes, is by turning on your ignition. If you have that little battery light right there, then that tells you that the fuse going to the uh, alternator or through the ignition, down through the field coil is okay, uh, down through the regulator. Um, so obviously we have power down to the alternator. I've got some other checks to do with my oscilloscope and multimeter, so we'll head down under the vehicle next. I'm just going to run through the wiring diagram, give you a bit of a heads up of what we're actually looking for. So remember how I said there was a fuse inside, and that's that bloke, uh, let's see, I believe it is the, this one here, uh, the F17. So the um, 20 amp fuse will power up our little light on the dash. This bloke down here, uh, the 140 amp will be our main power feed. As you can see, it's got B plus next to it. That's our main battery feeds. This is the one that goes back to the battery, of course. We should have uh, 12 volts or system voltage down here at our uh, yellow wire. And then these two are our um, PCM controlled wires. One is a yellow green by the looks and a blue uh, yellow. Um, what they do is the ECU will pulse a signal to the alternator uh, depending on its demand and that will be a, a duty cycle, a pulse width modulated signal and it will alter according to uh, the amount of load that's being put onto it. Um, and I'm not seeing that on a consistent level, it's just sort of up and down and she's history mate. But then the alternator will then send a signal back to the ECU to let it know that it's done its job. So that also will be a pulse width modulated signal. So we really should see two um, square wave signals going to and coming from 
and of course we should have our 12 volts going into it as well which I, I believe there will be but uh, we need to head underneath and have a look at what we're looking at all right so <laughs> honestly guys i can't get into there with the camera there's just not enough room um, you're gonna have to take my word for it okay so there's three wires going on to that connector on the back of it of course we've got our big battery one as well that's not what we're looking at i have done a voltage drop test on both uh, that positive and also the earth and they're okay this connector is what i'm interested in so there's a bigger wire on it that big yellow one will be the powered one through the fuse so i expect to see 12 volts there or uh, system voltage and the other two will be the signal wire so you're just going to have to take my word for it because honestly i can't get the camera anywhere near it so that's our first reading that's our big yellow fella it comes through fuse f17 which is a 20 amp fuse and should have power there all the time which it does system voltage okay on to the other two the two suspect ones so i've got it hooked up to that center wire you can see it's got a bit of activity there looks like it gets pulled down to earth let's just start her up and see what it does and then i'll turn on the lights and see what that does so it's getting pulled down there nice little signal then it sort of cuts out a little bit which is not unusual it's sort of kind of all over the shop isn't it then it's disappeared let's put on some lights high beam lights have just gone on and we've got packets of information well, you know duty cycle being push through but uh, man it's it's inconsistent isn't it I might just go to uh, the other wire because perhaps uh, that is the wire coming from the PCM this might be the return wire going back to the ECU and that of course would indicate uh, an internal fault in the alternator but I'll switch it over to the other wire and see what that one does I'm now on the green yellow wire which is the wire that's all the way to the edge not the center one that I was on before Let's have a look at that see what that does ignition on and start now that's a decent cycle that's a good signal or close enough to a good signal a few little pockets missing but uh, could be my oscilloscope who knows let's put a load on it okay now that to me that's the PCM activating and the alternator one is the one going back and it's uh, a bit of a hit and miss affair i'll just see if i can change the time base on that all right so this is the signal that's coming from the pcm to the alternator it looks good nice clean square and i'm just going to put a load on it and let's see if it changes the pulse width of that signal you notice that now it's changed the width of it hasn't it it's a longer on time than it is off time because we've got more of a load let's turn that load off and have a look and you can see the width has changed already so the PCM is commanding okay but the alternator is meh I don't want to play don't want to play I might just reconnect it one more time and have a look at the alternator um, with the with the oscilloscope set up in this um, fashion because it seems to be giving me a really good reading this wire I believe is uh, yellow green something along those lines uh, let's just start it up and have a look at the response well, we're definitely getting a signal back aren't we whoop just dropped out just dropped out headlights on so we're seeing that the alternator is working and not working as I suspected it's an inconsistent fault and that's why it was so hard to nail down but Clearly the PCM, I'd really love to have a, a, a two-channel um, oscilloscope and I could see the command as well as the response. But she's a flat line. Clear! It's too late. She's gone. So PCM's doing its job. Alternator, not so much. Of course, one thing I'm concerned about is the amount of oil. You probably can't see it here, but there's heaps of oil going onto that alternator. That is very, very typical of the Fords. And the reason being is, well, have a look what's above it. It was power steering and that can leak as well as the timing cover seal on the front and uh, that can flick out onto the alternator fills the alternator up with oil um, uh, contaminates the brushes etc you can see Ford in all their wisdom uh, decided to put this little neck here so that when we filled up the power steering fluid it didn't drip onto the alternator good one Ford all right guys I'm going to tell the customer they need another alternator I don't know what they're going to do um, 
it's a bit of a clapped out vehicle, but um, I guess they still need it, don't they? But it's up to them to decide what they want to do. Uh, but at least I've diagnosed it correctly and I can confidently put on an alternator knowing that that should bring everything back honky-dory. I've spoken to the customer and they've decided not to go ahead with the repair, which I think is a great idea. Why throw money at a clunker? It's just going to break down again. Hopefully she'll get a, another car, a decent car that I can maintain properly without it costing her a fortune. So guys, even though we weren't able to complete this repair, we were able to diagnose it correctly. And that's the important thing, not necessarily the repair itself, anyone can do that, but to be able to diagnose it, that takes a bit of skill. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did this time and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and don't forget to comment down below. Also, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So guys, until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.